Good evening and welcome. This is the Big 200. Um, kind of a celebratory uh, Facebook Live, but I'm going to get more into content versus just going, look at me at the 200. Yeah, well, so what? Well, <laughs> it's something. So my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my daily Facebook Live. My name, uh, my name is, I always said that part. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine. And this is messages from the masculine to inspire the feminine heart. This is number one, sorry, this is number 200, excuse me. Yes, the big 200. We hit a milestone. Um, and today's topic, because I was thinking about what it takes to consistently do broadcasts on Facebook Live to do 200 daily broadcasts. Well, almost 200. I did a bunch of them over the weeks. So I thought, well, let's apply it to the idea of a relationship. So the topic today is what it takes to last in love. And I was reading an article today that inspired this, but also some common sense things as well as some maybe some not so common sense things that will help you if you're in a relationship or looking to have a long-term relationship or what you can actually, um, what's the looking for? Bring into play and not ignore to attract the love you want and actually keep the love you want. Yeah, both of those things. All right. So if you feel like commenting during the broadcast, please, please, please feel free. Bear in mind there's like a 12, 15 second delay from when you type something to when I see it. So be patient when you do type something in. Second thing is that um, once I'm completing this broadcast, if you're watching afterwards, any comments you post, I will see as well. I'll respond to those in the comments. And third, if you find that there's some value in this, you think somebody else should watch this to get value themselves, please, please feel free to share it out either during the broadcast or afterwards. And fourth, I'll say at the end how you can reach me to get in touch if you want help in this area of love and relationships. Cool? Cool beans, as they say. So, getting to the topic, um, how to last in love. It's amazing. Now, let me rewind slightly. A couple of days ago, I spoke about um, convenient relationships. This is not about that. <laughs> let me be very clear. What I'm talking about here is really how to raise the bar and have a conscious, there's an idea, conscious relationship that is above and beyond convenience. And also how to make it last. Because for many people, being in a relationship is the goal to get into a relationship. Well, let me back that up. I'm saying something that wrong. For the masculine, let me be clear, the masculine is about goal setting. And I talked about this one before, month, about a month ago, about relationships for men is achievement of goals. So ladies, if you're in a relationship with a man, his habitual um, instinct is to go from goal to goal to goal. So once he's got you, as it were, in a relationship, he may start g giving the energy up of giving up as in not doing anything efforting to keep you in love with him or to be in love with you. Dangerous territory indeed. But part of it, because in the masculine energetic, it's the way we're wired, particularly as masculine men, to go for the next goal, next goal. And I mentioned in that broadcast, again, it's about a month ago I did, I think, a month and a half. I talked about for men that setting a goal is what keeps us engaged. So when we're getting you in a relationship, the question's going to be, what is the next goal? And in fact, I remember... I think it was Buzz Aldrin was interviewed or something about when he did the moonshot, how he and Neil Armstrong had different lives after the moonshot because Neil Armstrong didn't have any goals after he did. He's like, I've gone to the moon, what else do I need to do? And he gave up on life. Whereas Buzz Aldrin had other goals when he came back because that's what keeps us engaged in life and being effective in life is to have a new goal in mind, a new direction, a new focus. For me, at the moment, it's my next, daily, my next Facebook Live I do each day is kind of my next goal, so it keeps me going. That's actually, a, didn't, I didn't realize that, it's a very self-inflicted motivation to keep going. Because <laughs> I'm going, what am I going to talk about tomorrow for 201 and 202? So that is something that is a way to apply to relationships. So ladies, if you're in a relationship with a man who has captured you in love and, and got you in a relationship, make sure he has another goal in mind in the relationship, in the relationship confines. I'm not talking, talking about goals in business or in money or in life, I'm talking about in the relationship. For example, it might be to plan a vacation together sometime down the road or move in together if you're that far down the relationship or to meet the parents. That's a big one, I know. Or it could be something else. It's that it's really looking at the opportunities of what a man can put in place as a goal that he'll enjoy. It's good to have. That will benefit you in the relationship, definitely. And that will improve the way that you two are having a relationship together. Because again, the masculine being goal-oriented is like... It's like we go along stepwise, whereas you ladies go along as a flow, because the feminine is in the engagement of the flow of life. 
So in your relationship, it's a continuation for you. It's an exploration for you all the time. And you generally won't get complacent as much because you enjoy the journey naturally as a feminine woman. Now, I'm saying this is a generality because some women, that isn't easy. But again, for the masculine, having goals continually in place to keep us moving forward keeps us in, keeps us in um, as well as not alignment, wrong word, but on a par with you. So it's just, as you're moving up smoothly, we're doing this, staying with you, as it were. That's the way I'm engaging. So that's one. That's the first one. Wow, it's giving me a bunch of these. Um, second thing, way to make it last. I say it this way, it's coming through. Never take each other for granted. It's so simple, but so powerful because we, we as humans tend to get comfortable with something. It's actually, I think it's actually a wiring in our DNA, in our, um, not our DNA, but in our way our minds work. Okay, this is an analogy, so bear with me. I'm just watching how it's coming through. If you hear, for example, so I'm hearing it right now, refrigerator humming in the background. After a certain period of time, you'll tune it out automatically. Your mind will just forget it because you'll just be out of the radar. The thing about that, which is love, which is the thing, is it's a programming thing we have built in. It's a wiring part of who we are. We have this gift as human beings, men and women, to tune out things without realizing it. So something happening in the, noise, in the sound level, smells, um, vibrations, we can actually tune things out almost automatically because it's the way we're wired. In relationship, that's a dangerous habit because we start to take our partner for granted. We tend to tune them out. Yes, we start to tune them out. So how, not, how, sorry, how to have a long-lasting relationship and how to thrive in a long-lasting relationship is never take your partner for granted. That, it does require conscious effort. As again, I said, not convenient relationship, conscious relationship. So it does require conscious effort. So I highly recommend you focus on that. That's number two. That was quicker than number one, but we'll see if we can keep going. So the third one. Um, well, actually, there's about four pieces in this one, so I'll break it down from where it starts. One of them is, is, is don't keep secrets, which on the inverse is be transparent, be honest. Better to be honest and be challenged in the relationship than to stuff something down that will suppress your life energy and you end up, dis- end up destroying the relationship in the long term anyway. So there's another piece that I'm watching that's floating around here somewhere. I'll come back. Excuse my mind, it's doing its thing. I'm just channeling again, it seems. But there's pieces of this that are so vital for you if you want a healthy relationship that require you to stretch out of your comfort zone, be more visible, and let your partner see you for who you really are. That was the piece. So by being honest and transparent, that's part of that. Revealing yourself in vulnerability, in transparency, and to be naked, naked um, energetically with your partner so they can see who you really are. Now, if it breaks the relationship, that's probably meant to happen. If it strengthens the relationship, you're on the right path. I mean, that's kind of the easy uh, black and white conversation piece. But that's a piece of it that's really important, which leads into another part, which is about this... Um, the challenge of, well, no, let's say it this way. Part of the human dynamic is we think that we want to possess other people. Yes, it's true. It's a human dynamic. You like to own things. Sometimes we think that we do that with our partners, which means that we get jealous when they're around somebody of opposite sex or doing certain things that we want to do. The previous point about being honest and transparent will tend to minimize that happening because when you, could, when you have, here we go, <laughs> I knew it was in there. When you have transparency and honesty with each other and you speak to the truth to each other, you have this wonderful thing called trust. And when you have trust, jealousy doesn't have space to play in your relationship. Now, trust has to be earned and can be broken easily. So don't mess around with it. Build the trust and own the trust with each other. Make the space between you open, transparent and connected so when when you communicate with each other, you can trust what you're hearing, trust what you're saying. And when you have that, there is no jealousy. In fact, not that you should test it, but when you're in, out in the world with other people, you know where your heart lies, and so does your partner. That's a healthy sign. That's a clue to have a healthy relationship. Make sure you got that one. Um, there's something else going on. Well, this is also about trusting each other as well, so that you don't you don't spy on each other. You don't like you know like check into their phone what they're up to and stuff. In fact, even better is 
you're quite happy to show you, share your phone with your partner. I mean, if you're out with your partner at some place, you want to show pictures. You don't like to worry. Like, don't let us see that picture. Unless, of course, it's a Christmas present you've hidden away. That's a different story. I would delete those pictures. The Christmas presents you're saving for your partner, just in case they do go through your phone. <laughs> but that's the thing: is is having that level of transparency, that you don't have any secrets. Which means, now, if you, this is a key thing: if you're doing something that's a surprise for your partner, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about secrets that you hide away from your partner. Because the thing about secrets that you keep that are possibly negatively impacting your relationship, which is why I talk about this in this context, is when you keep secrets from your partner, they become these, um, I'm trying to think of the right words. I've got some really bad analogies showing up. Don't want to use that one or this one. They interfere with your ability to connect with your partner. And what they do is they, they build a wall, that's an easy way of doing it, between you and your partner. So if your partner is someone who you're building trust with and you keep holding secrets, you're trying to build trust, you put a wall in front of it. You try to build trust, you build a wall in front of it. And eventually you block yourself from being transparent with your partner, which goes back to the previous point. Being transparent, or well, two points ago. So being that point, is, being that clear is vital. And that is, is probably one of the fundamental pieces of relationships, is how to keep yourself clean, psychically, energetically, karmically with your partner to stay together. Because that's a big part of this relationship di- di- um, paradigm, is to really be clean with your partner. Now, let me just sidebar slightly into this post about healthy relationship. Having sexual, sexual chemistry, sexual polarity, and sexual, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, compatibility with your partner is a big plus. Some of these things can be learned and trained. It's not always innate stuff, so there's possibility in that place too. So in the same bucket, I'm, I'm putting those in the same place. Um, having an understanding of how each other languages each other, like how you language your stuff. Ideally, you choose someone who's on a path of growth, evolution, and change that you are as well, or is parallel. With some differences, you can bring new things to each other, but it's not where one person's got a massive amount of, t- of tools under their belt and the other person hasn't, because that becomes very disparate and doesn't make a healthy relationship. That becomes, as I know as a coach, coaching client operational versus equal partners. So having a common language to work with, especially in the growth in um, uh, personal growth industry or the or personal growth work or reading the same books or doing yoga together or doing tantra or ayahuasca, like doing, it, doing things that are overlapping each other or parallel each other versus one doing all of them and none, one doing none of them. Big key for a healthy relationship. So it's a compatibility piece, but it's also about enjoying exploring what the other partner knows to have this balance and give and take in relationship can really be freeing. Um, so having a, common fra- having a common framework of reference for communication, for understanding, for you working through your processes. Um, this is one of the ones I've been challenged by. Is be okay if the other person gets angry with you. This is one of my biggest challenges when I was a younger, when I was young, when I was a teenager and in my early 20s in relationships, I didn't know how to handle it. I ran away. I shut down. That's in my, I talk about that in my book. Being safe enough to trust when, you're, when, you're, when your partner gets angry with you. Now, I'll get to a caveat in a moment. That you don't run away. That you're willing to listen. And you're also willing to help them defuse and come down again. Now, if you're, someone, if you're dealing with someone who's a petty tyrant, who's a narcissist, a sociopath, or just simply is addicted to anger and is, an, is um, emotionally or psychically abusing you, that's a different story. That's the sort of thing you want to get, the, get your butt out of there. Let's be clear. I'm talking more about if something happens and there's a accumulation and there's a build-up and there's a release. I'm upset that way. Because if that person's triggered when you leave the toothpaste off the, the cap off the toothpaste or the toilet paper the wrong way or they don't close the bathroom door or whatever that is and they react to every single one of those, they may have a problem. So being able to handle, or I should say being able to stay present when your partner gets angry is a big plus too because that happens in life. It isn't all, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not, it's not all grace and ease necessarily. It's got there's parts of the puzzle and challenging the puzzle. So that's another one I can add to the puzzle. There's a bunch more I'm thinking, which, but this is another part. I talked about keeping secrets and also about trusting. In the same bucket, as it were, is telling the truth, which I mentioned. So the other side of that is don't lie to your partner. You know, and this is the thing. I'm going to spin it this way because obviously you don't want to lie to your partner about money or sex or whatever those things are like if you cheat on your partner that you mean be honest and pay the consequences or hold that secret forever and it'll destroy your guts literally that's another conversation by the way what i'm talking about with lying is 
when your partner asks you how you're doing and you say fine if that's not true be willing to tell them well actually i'm not feeling so good or this happened i'm not so what to do with it so you know sorry i'm just no, I have to break out the glasses because I have to read the comments. Teddy, thank you. In order to stay present, you must have already established rules. Well, <sighs> actually, no. I'm going, to, I'm going to contradict that one because I think you can stay present regardless of any rules or not. However, I do recommend having agreements. I hate the word rules anyway because it's such constriction, but agreements and you can call them ground rules. That way you can use rules or even guidelines of what the framing of your relationship is. Because if you're, for example... In a monogamous relationship, one of your ground rules and your agreements is you don't go out with somebody else, sexually speaking. If you do that and you're a polyamorous relationship, that's totally fine. But if you're not in one of those, that's not cool. So in that framework, I would say there are certain ground rules or agreements, because again, the word rules gets a bit overused to me and I don't want to use a different term, that the framework of, of trust is based upon you keeping that um, agreement in place all these agreements in place. So, but you can be present regardless of that, to be honest. I believe those two are separate things. So I hope that answers your question there. Um, what's the other one that's coming up? Oh, sorry, I, I'm, trying to, I, I'm trying to avoid using the glasses because I like being, being without them, but I have to read the comments. So God, I can answer both better words. Than, well, you're welcome, Teddy. So yeah, I'm just adding that as my own personal... Again, this is my, this is my broadcast, so I guess I'm using my own languaging. So if it's, if it's for you, great. If it doesn't, say la vie. It's, it's what it is. Um, I'm trying to think what else is on my list of things to talk about with this about long term relationship. Oh, this is the other part. Because it talks about agreements and about being on the same page. So, obviously, I would say obviously that includes long term family goals. If you have kids, want to have kids, don't want to have kids, whatever those things are, does that match? Um, this one I'm going to throw in there as well because there's another one I've dealt with in the past is dietary agreements. Yes, dietary agreements. You can have different dietary preferences. For example, one of you could be a um, on a paleo plan, and someone else could be a vegan. You can have that. I just don't recommend it if you do it differently. I was I had a relationship experience in the past where um, my partner was vegetarian, and I had to leave the house to eat meat. That didn't work very well. It didn't last very long. So having common values, as I mentioned earlier, is so critical because it can be really funky the sort of way things work out in partnership if you don't have really effective and uh, mutually beneficial agreements in place. So I hope that makes sense to you. <laughs> That's a much an example. But same thing also with if it's smoking pot or drinking or smoking. It's good going in if you have the same agreements. You know, someone who's a committed 12-step person may have a challenge with a partner who, if, if, they're, if their poison was alcohol, if the partner likes drinking wine every night, that wouldn't work. Or it'd be very hard to do. So having common ground, again, as I said at the beginning, common ground is a vital part of healthy relationships. And if you want a relationship to last, having common ground that... Oh, here's a piece. Here it comes. Okay. I talked also earlier about the, the journey of growth and being in the evolutionary process, about raising the bar and raising the standards of conscious relationship. So, common ground to start with and a growth path that's... As I put my hands together, common growth path that is on the same page most of the way through. Now, I did mention the, early, right, the first, first one about... Um, men having goals along the way as women flow through in that, that different, different energetic of travel through relationship. And we tend to put these three things together, so bear with me for a second. So that's one part. With the idea of having a common ground to start with, and then on top of that, having the desire to grow together by share, having common shared experiences. There we go. Which could be traveling the world together. It could be writing a book together. It could be learning a musical instrument together. It could be going to workshops together. Finding common experiences that bond you and connect you. Because frankly, frankly, so many couples don't do that in the world. So finding, and it could be bringing practices to each other that the other person hasn't done before. So there's something about sharing, it's like Christmas, it's like Christmas I guess, being that time of the year, that you bring to your partner your experience of something you've done for 20 years that they have never done but it's so additive and they just, they just get enthralled by it and want to participate. That could work too. But, and here's the piece, for the partner who's not done it, don't do it out of duty. Do it out of, out of choice, out of intention, out of exuberance and excitement. Because there are, ideally there are things your partner's done that you never have done 
that are maybe a little like, ooh, that's a bit scary, but also at the same time, it's exciting. And when it comes to that point, then you can choose into it. But if it's something you like, I'm so not into that stuff at all, it could be separating you from your partner in that area. So it sounds like an exhaustive like, interview process where your partner like, what's your goals, what's your intentions, what do you love, what you don't love? It could be messy. I'm talking about this really, this stuff should come up early in the, in the relationship. This should be early in the conversations, even before you get in bed together. And that's going to change some of your minds, I know. It's having this conversation of compatibility, um, not to be the same, because I'm clearly telling you not about being the same, it's about deeper than that, but having a willingness to explore and discover each other, who you're, what you're about, your histories, your journeys, your past, your future, can really be beneficial. This is a piece I just, wanna, I just came up as soon as I said that. In my talks, you may have heard me talk about this before, but I'm going to talk about it in this context, is for most of us, if not all of us, we have taken on patterns of relating and dating relationships from what we saw our parents model for us when we were kids. And this is, that's a very generic way of putting it. There's a lot more to it, and I've talked about this before. Meaning that, as an adult, you've taken on reflexive automatic patterns and programming from your parents <clears throat> that will impact and interfere with your relationships. And generally speaking, so will your partner. Naturally speaking, unless you've done work to heal and release it, which some of us have done, and that's part of the journey I've been on, so I know other people have as well. And that's one reason I help my clients heal that, because it's in the way of them having what they really want. Because nine times out of ten, those patterns that you have interfere with what you really do want. So, in the context of the list to help make your relationship last longer, is know what that is. If nothing else, turn and face what happened in the past and see it for what it really is. Because by doing that, you're on the way to healing. And secondly, when you meet your partner and they share and reveal their, their history, again, bring this up early. Don't wait till you've been in bed for six, you've been together for six months or in bed for several times. You want to do it before that to know what really is in the way or what really working. Because you'll discover, surprisingly often, that what's attracting this partner is the fact their patterns reciprocate with your patterns. Like even negative ones, such as abuse. Let's play with a big one. That maybe you were raised in a household where you were abused when you were a kid. And maybe your prospective partner was in a, family, in a family where yelling at each other was normal. So the abuse came from verbal abuse. So when you come together, there's a receiver and a giver of the abuse. That's a very simplistic way of describing it, but that's what a lot of people do in the relationships. They don't go on Tinder and swipe right and choose somebody because they look good. Well, they do that. However, the subconscious mind is going, they've got the pattern I need. If that scares you, good. That's a big piece of the work I do with my clients. It's a big piece of the work that we need to do to heal our past broken patterns to stop these patterns reciprocating down through life. So this one is one of those, that's, that's actually um, a whole detour off the freeway into a whole other conversation because I've done, I've done a lot of work on this area and talked about it before on broadcasts. So healing your past is part of it. If you've done the work to heal your past and you meet somebody else who's healed their past, ideally, that one's off the table, so there's no issue. So it's choosing partnership out of a higher level of vibration, of consciousness, of intention, and getting what you really want. I'm, I know it's probably about 10 or more ideas I can put into this long-term relationship. If they come up in the next 30 seconds, I'll add them. If not, I'll wrap up because I'm realizing that I'm getting to a completion point. Um, what is the next one? There is, one, there is a couple more I'm going to share. Um, oh, maybe it's the biggest one. I didn't mention that. <laughs> is Now, this is for the conscious couple relationship choice and for those who are choosing to make a difference in the world. So... I'll probably shout out all most of the other people who are not watching this video. If you're watching this, it'll speak to you. Find someone who honors and respects what you're up to in the world and that you are and respect what they're up to in the world. If it matches what you do, even better. But at least, at least, have a, um, a choice to meet someone who plays with you in your conversation. So if you're up to doing something with animals or with kids or with social changes... It's great if you find a partner who does the same thing with you. That is pretty much. So that's the big one. I'm going to leave that one with the, the end of the conversation because this one is a big one to throw at you. So, yeah, I'll leave it on that one. There's more, there's more to add to the conversation, I'm sure, but I want to give this to a start, give this to you as a good chunk of things to contemplate and to consider. And I invite you to add any below you think of that are added to this, and I can respond to you down there in the comments. And that is number 200. Thank you for watching my broadcast. This is my daily Facebook Live, um, number 200 in an ongoing series of talks about masculine and feminine polarity. 
relationships. Um, they're called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart, and this is number 200. Made it, and I guess I'm going to keep going because there's more, there's more content that keeps showing up. Um, and this is, a, this is a select range of ideas about how to have a long-term relationship that works. Take these to heart, write about these, think about these. If you have any other ones you want to add to the list, please put them below. I might add a few more on my own if they come up after this broadcast. Um, you can watch all my broadcasts on my website, which is barryselby.com. You go to the video blog, and all of these live there in sequence. They're actually the YouTube replays. You can find them on my business page if you want to comment and be, I hope. I'm still in. I didn't turn my phone on, didn't disturb, and I got a phone call. Oh, well. All right, let me wrap this up and finish this up. I hope you're still there. Damn. Uh, <laughs> First time I didn't do it, didn't disturb. Okay, quickly wrapping this up. You can watch them on my website, on my, on my business page, and also on YouTube. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. And if you want help in the area of relationships, you know where to find me. Social media is a way to reach me or on my website. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Please take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon.